The game of Go is incredibly complex. There are 10 in the power of 360 possible configurations. DeepMind's AlphaGo learned to play this game and eventually defeated the world's number one Go player. Now, if you think of chip design, this game is even more complex. It's literally trillions of times more complex. Now there is an AI, which learns how to design chips by itself. How good did it get so far? Let's find out. I've been working in chip design for 5 years now. And I can remember when I just started. This was to me a whole new world. A new world full of beautiful designs and layouts. But since then, the chip market is getting even more competitive. And now AI is helping us to design better chips faster. Silicon chips are going through three main phases of the design. First of all, system level design, then circuits coding, and then this code will be mapped to the logic gates, so-called physical design, where layout of the chip is created. Exactly at this last phase of physical design is where AI tools can shine. Just imagine, you have a fixed area for your chip, and your goal is to fit as many logic as possible to this area, because area is money. When you're fabricating chips on the fab, you pay per area. Floor planning is sort of similar to planning a new apartment when you strategically plan all the water sources and also sockets to get the socket as close to your table as possible to avoid using extra wires. The idea of floor planning is very similar. You want to place all the macros, so all the blocks and all the standard cells in the most optimal way possible. Usually, chip designers are doing it using EDA tools, so-called electronic design automation tools. These tools, doing a lot of math at the background, basically they are computing the most optimal spot for each particular cell. And again, they are doing this optimization, optimizing for the best PPA. We call it PPA. It's power, performance, so speed and area. This process is obviously a lot of work. It's very time consuming. It can take from a couple of weeks to months for really complex designs. This problem is so incredibly complex because we have lots of states to consider. If we compare it to the game of chess, which has 10 in the power of 123 states, and then a game of Go has 10 in the power of 360 of states. The chip game has 10 in the power of 90,000 states for a small design. But you can imagine for complex designs like SOCS, this is even more complicated. And guess who is amazing at such games? Artificial intelligence. AI is great at learning from huge data sets. That's why in the last years, EDA companies and chip makers start to develop AI tools for chip design. These tools won't replace human engineers, but what they can do, they can help in the process of chip design. Basically, I can outsource some of the time-consuming routine tasks to an AI assistant, so I can get more free time for creative work, for concept work, for work which brings value. As the world chess champion Gary Kasparov said, a good human plus a machine is the best combination. So how AI for chip design works? Here we are using GNNs, so graph neural networks and reinforcement learning. GNNs are a type of machine learning algorithms which are specialized for analyzing graphs. Graph is a data structure which is built of nodes and edges. And chips are actually also graph-like structures, where macros and standard cells are nodes and wires are edges. GNNs extract information from graphs, make predictions about their connections, and rearrange nodes to find the best fit. And when we combine it with reinforcement learning, this turns the floor planning into a graph optimization game. 
Reinforcement learning is really popular right now. It's used by DeepMind for training AlphaZero and AlphaGo to play chess and Go. And it was also used in the training of ChatGPT. The whole idea of reinforcement learning is to complete a task in an environment which is driven by rewards. Neural network model is being trained on thousands of floor plans. And these floor plans are developed by human experts, and these are optimized for power, area, and speed. Then AI generates lots of floor plan options for a particular chip, and human experts will be ranking all these floor plans. When a floor plan is well optimized for wire length, congestion, leakage, area, AI will be getting a reward. But in case AI comes up with a suboptimal floor plan, it will be punished. In this way, AI over time iteratively learns how to come up with a floor plan optimized for getting the highest reward. I don't know if you remember, but it all started with one very famous paper. It was a paper by Google published about a year ago, a graph placement methodology for fast chip design. Basically, in this paper, they described how they used AI for designing Google chip, so-called tensor processing unit. And the results were really interesting because AI was able to come up with the optimal floor plan just in 24 hours, while, according to Google, for their experienced engineer, it took one month to come to the same optimal result. And the key highlight of the paper was the speed. They're saying, look, AI can do it so much faster. But this was some year ago. Since then, there were more recent and even more interesting results published. For instance, by Cadence. Cadence is the largest EDA tool company, and they've also developed an AI tool. They've used this tool for a 5 nanometer mobile chip. And they were able to improve chip's performance by 14% and reduce the leakage power by 7%. And they've achieved this using one single engineer plus AI tool for 10 days instead of using 10 engineers for several months. Also, NVIDIA developed an AI tool for circuits design, and eventually AI designed 25% smaller circuit compared to those designed by humans with EDA tools. Actually, AI tools for chip design drive lots of inspiration from software. For instance, Synopsys, which is the second largest EDA tool company, they've also launched their AI tool for chip design called DSO AI. This tool was inspired by DeepMind's AlphaZero, and Synopsys has already used this tool for more than 100 chips type-outs. And this tool helped them to reduce power consumption of the chips in average by 15%, as well as to reduce the area and overall the usage of human resources. <laughs> this result sounds fascinating, right? But don't jump to the conclusions quickly because in reality, chip design industry is in the early, in the very early phase of AI adoption. So far, AI used by just a few companies and just in a few steps in the chip design flow, just in the few steps out of thousands of steps. So AI can help us in the process of chip design, but we will always need human engineers because chip design is so complex, it's so creative, it's just rocket science. Still, in the long term, I see a lot of potential applications of AI in chip design. First of all, with AI, we can design chips faster, and time is money. Moreover, I tried to use ChatGPT to write RTL code. This is, if you remember, step two of chip design flow. Let's have a look. Can you write a code of an infinite impulse response filter in VHDL? Oh wow, this actually looks correct. And you can ask it to explain the code and then use this explanation for documentation, which is amazing. If AI shown to speed up 
floor planning and chip design, why can't you use it to speed up verification? Because you know, verification, so verifying features of a chip usually is very time consuming. It's even more time consuming than physical design. Sometimes it can take up to 60 to 70% of the chip development cycle. If only AI could help to accelerate the verification, this would speed up time to market a lot. On top of this, AI can be used in the chip design industry beyond chip design. For instance, it's already used for visual inspection of the wafers to detect defects on the wafer quickly. And with AI, they've achieved nine times process speed up. If you noticed in the last years, there was a huge trend. Everyone was building AI chips. A lot of startups and large chip makers were building AI accelerators to give more compute power to AI. And look now, there are chips designed with the help of AI. So basically AI speeding up itself. Hmm? What comes next? I think AI is likely to help out in other sub-steps of chip design flow, like analog design, analog layout, verification, validation, and also RTA coding. And eventually, AI can start helping out to co-design the entire stack, so hardware and software together, that powers AI itself. And here we are heading into the endless technological explosion. You know, so far there were a couple of game changers which made modern chips possible. First of all, invention of transistors, then connecting those transistors to build standard cells, then came EDA tools, and now AI. I'm certain that with time we will see AI being used more and more often in the chip development flow, just like in every other aspect of our lives. And that's exciting. Although I would still prefer driving a car with chips inside, which are designed by human engineers. But we'll see about that. Thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel, the link to the Patreon is below. And I will see you in the next video. Ciao.